Some of our most cherished natural resources are our rivers, wetlands, lakes, and seashores. We use these water resources for daily consumption, recreation, and commercial fishing, and they provide important habitat for thousands of species of fish, birds, and mammals. More and more, however, we're confronted with troubling signs of collapse within the ecosystems of our waterways. Beach closures, destroyed habitat, unsafe drinking water, fish kills. Who is responsible for this impairment of our shared water resources? Many think that industry or sewage treatment plants are to blame. This may have been the case in the past, but in the last 25 years, the United States has made huge strides in cleaning up these major point sources of pollution. Believe it or not, the largest threat to our waterways today comes from people who don't realize that what they do every day has an impact on our water. They may not even live near a river, a lake, or a bay, but their impact is still very real. This impact comes from polluted runoff, or non-point source pollution, which occurs when rainfall picks up pollutants from the land and deposits them in our rivers, lakes, and coastal waters. To understand how these pollutants make their way into our water bodies, you have to look at nature's watershed systems. A watershed is defined as an area in which all drainage flows to a common outlet. We all live in a watershed, and they come in all different shapes and sizes. Every time it rains within our watershed, natural drainage and the stormwater sewer system carry surface runoff downslope. Non-point source pollution accumulates as surface runoff picks up contaminants along its path towards larger water bodies. All of our water bodies are connected, and as streams and rivers converge on their course towards lower elevations, our cumulative impact on water quality can be extensive. As a local example, excess nutrients like nitrogen found in runoff are particularly problematic for bodies of water like Long Island Sound. These nutrients are washed off of suburban lawns and agricultural fields, and when they finally settle in Long Island Sound, they stimulate the growth of algae and aquatic plants. When these emergent plants eventually die and decompose, they use up the dissolved oxygen in the water, often leading to large-scale fish kills. Nutrients aren't the only problem. Runoff conveys many other harmful pollutants to our water bodies. Oils, salts, and heavy metals are washed off of roadways, while pathogens and bacteria enter surface water through improper disposal of animal wastes and faulty domestic sewage systems. When water can soak into the ground, most of these harmful pollutants are filtered out. Natural ground cover allows a good percentage of rainfall to infiltrate into the soil, restricting the total volume of runoff and adding a degree of pollutant removal through natural processing. But every time another large building goes up, or another asphalt-covered parking lot is built, we're adding to the amount of impervious or impenetrable surfaces within our watershed. And the more impervious surfaces, the less soft ground where rainwater can be absorbed, increasing surface runoff and decreasing natural infiltration. By hindering these natural systems of pollutant removal, increased levels of surface runoff convey larger volumes of the pollutants which impair our major waterways. Today, non-point source pollution remains the nation's largest source of water quality problems. It's the main reason that approximately 40% of our rivers, lakes, and estuaries are not clean enough to meet basic uses such as fishing or swimming. Solutions to this problem do exist. The Jordan Cove Urban Watershed Project aimed to investigate how well low-impact suburban development techniques were able to reduce the export of non-point source pollutants.